Alright, well, many of you know me um, as one of the editors of the Universe Plant Newsletter. Today I'd like to talk with you about my professional work, which is with an organization called the Nature Conservancy. My talk here today is Invaders and Carnivores, the, the um, Invasive Species Threat to Native Biodiversity. As an outline of this, uh, my discussion, I'm going to start talking about the, what the Nature Conservancy is and its role in biodiversity conservation. I'd like to go into what invasive species threaten carnivorous plants. And finally, those carnivorous plants which themselves are invasive species. Biopractices. Very, very briefly, a conservation easement is, suppose that you were a landholder in the United States and you have no interest in mining your property for minerals. Well, if your land had natural biodiversity value, you could approach the Nature Conservancy and sell the Conservancy your rights to mine on your property. If we thought it was an appropriate action, we would buy from you that right. You could sell it to for pennies. As a result, you can no longer mine on your land and the property value drops and your taxes drop. So the um, conservation easements are very desirable for people who have land and want to maintain its natural value and have no interest in mining on it or using it to walk in a certain way. For serving land is not enough. It must be monitored and usually managed in order to maintain its value. Uh, numerous anthropogenic or uh, human-caused stresses must be counterbalanced at our preserves. The Conservancy has a number of national programs which are directed towards um, issues which face all of the preserves across the country. Um, invasive species, fire management, issues of yeah. uh, a, a dramatic case of extinctions and how these things could happen is, is um, in uh, Lake Victoria in East Africa. Lake Victoria is a large lake and, and there used to be about 400 fish species. In Lake Victoria. Since the introduction of two significant non-native species, the Nile perch and the tilapia, the ecosystem in, the, in Lake Victoria is collapsing so rapidly that fisheries are pulling in only three species in any reasonable numbers. Two of them are the non-native species. So you've gone from a biodiversity of 400 species to three. What control methods do we do? We use anything that works. We burn, we pull, we cut, we mow, we change the way the word of the land is being used. We use herbicide, we use flooding, we use solarization, which means putting down big pieces of plastic on the ground and just cooking everything underneath it. We use biocontrol and we use weed prevention methods. Anything that works. Now, when do we choose what we want to use? You have to think. Okay. Every method of weed control you use causes damage or disruption to the environment. Everything you do, you can say, oh, we'll just get a bunch of volunteers up and pull them out, have them pull the weeds up. Have you ever seen a riparian hillside after 300 Boy Scouts have clambered over trying to pull out all the native plants? Every method of control does damage. So we use those methods of control which decrease the weed population as much as possible while minimizing the decrease to the native biodiversity. When I use the word exotic, I mean that in the sense of not from here. And not exotic, ooh, an exotic place. Exotic means something not from that area. So this is Lithium salicaria. This used to be a carnivorous hand plant habitat in New York. This is Phragmites australis. This is on Long Island, New York. You can see this is a mud flat, which has been transformed into a dense growth of, of uh, Phragmites. A few examples of introductions that have occurred around the world. Dionea in Alabama, Florida, Pennsylvania, Saracenia Flava in New Zealand, Saracenia Minor in New Jersey, so on, Perpurea in Arizona, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Ireland, blah, 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 blah. and everything has been planted in California. I'm sure that each of you have been on the field has probably seen something like that. Hey, Siggy, in your video, Siggy, Siggy. You're right. Didn't you mention in one of your videos looking at carnivores and, was it purpurea in the black forest? 
That's right, and it's also on the CD-ROM. There's a site in the Jurassic region in Switzerland uh, where Zarosinia purpurea grows in nests with a diameter of some uh, one meter and more. However, the uh, authori authorities said it's not a danger to the uh, endemic uh, nature, and so they tolerate Zarosinia purpurea in Switzerland. I don't know, I, don't, and, uh, I talked to some folks from New Zealand who contacted me and said, we've got Zarosinia flava. We've got Zarosinia flava. It's going to cause a problem. It's not a rat grower, and said it's, it, it, it grows relatively slowly. Contact the native, you know, if, if this is an issue, I'll put you in touch with people who'd be happy to get the plants, you know, and instead of just pulling them off from the back of the truck or something like that. So yeah, there are absolutely cases in which these are not problems that you're talking about apparently in Germany. Case history number two, Interpolaria and Flata. In Washington, as Hawkeye talked about, there are pot colonies, infestations of ventricularia inflata near human population centers in western Washington. We don't know whether or not this is some kind of peculiar bird thing or whether or not this was brought there by humans. It's potentially it's under consideration for being classified a noxious species in Washington. Wouldn't that be a pity if it was something native and interesting? What are the consequences? For this, in, uh, for, for this introduction, if it is an introduction, for the native species in Washington. Has this spread into California by way of the Pacific Flyway? Uh, birds migrating north and south. Hawkeye uh, has told me about sites of uh, site of utricularia in a zoo in Fresno, California. Now, it could be that um, Johnny Apple utricularia seed person spread them there as well, or it could be that birds have merely moved seeds from Washington down into California. This is all speculation on my part. If it's an invasive we So in final review, I just want to say that biodiversity conservation is proceeding in the United States, although not fast enough. Invasive species threaten even native plant communities safely on preserves, and carnivorous plants have demonstrated invasive characters within the wild. And yeah, and so what it's best saying is that a lot of these organizations are working across purposes. For example, the Fish and Game Department, uh, one of their officials in California was recently you know, at, at a function, a retirement function, recently said that, in his opinion, that the Department of Fish and Game's job is to stock turkeys in California, which is a non-native species here. And so, and it's, that's, you know, turkeys are doing a significant amount of damage. But anyway, we can talk about it. Some people think California is already populated by turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Barry.